guys, welcome back to the channel. It's me, Surya, your favorite sewing friend. And today I'm going to be chatting to you about the Felicia Pinafore dress by Tissuti Fabrics. I bought the PDF pattern online for $14 from the Tissuti Fabrics website. From my measurements, I worked out that I'm a size M for this dress pattern. I didn't make any major adjustments to this dress pattern. The only thing that I did was that I extended the hem by about five centimeters. I'm 170 centimeters in height. I did look at the model online and they, well, I really couldn't tell how tall they were. Maybe there, there was like the height somewhere online, but I couldn't find it. So just to be safe, I added five centimeters because even though this dress is a midi length already, I don't mind it being a little bit longer on me because I do like a longer look dress. It's probably all that Pride and Prejudice and like little women that I've been watching. So the fabrics that are recommended for this dress are, let me check, light to medium weight linen, linen blend, cotton viscose, lightweight wool crepe or wool gauze. So for me, the first dress that I used, so this one over here is my test run, I actually used a sort of medium to heavy weight linen. I would say it's like more of a heavier weighted medium weight linen. Um, so this was actually intended for pants when I first bought it. I got this fabric from Spotlight. I can't remember how much it was, but it wasn't that expensive. I just really liked the pattern. I thought it looked really cool with pants. And then for some reason that never happened and it turned into this. The color is a bit loud for me because I don't really wear that many colors. Although I am trying to push the boundaries and be a bit more like experimental with my style of dress at the moment. But yeah, it turned out pretty good. The second dress that I made um, was out of a tan colored, it was like a rust colored, no, I would say tan colored um, linen. It's more of a medium to lightweight linen. I got this one 40% off at Spotlight again. I think originally it was like $23 a meter or something like that and then I got it for about like um, $13 a meter. <laughs> Yes, so it was a bargain, 40% off. I was really happy with that. So the last dress that I made was out of a cotton, like cotton suiting type of fabric. It was a, actually a clearance fabric that I found in Spotlight, again. Um, it was $6 a meter, so really cheap, but the, the suiting fabric, it sort of has like a checked sort of texture going on in there. Uh, it's also a little bit see-through, so I had to line it with a plain cotton fabric that I picked up also from Spotlight, which incidentally turned out to be more expensive than the clearance fabric that I got. So the lining fabric was $9 and then the clearance fabric was $6. But overall, it turned out great. My most favorite make is the navy version of this because it's like really easy to layer and wear and I wear it all the time and it's really good for work. It's a boring navy color. So apart from fabrics, you will also need to get a thread that will match your fabric that you've chosen. You will also need some lightweight fusible interfacing. I got this one, the fusible interfacing non-woven. It's the light one and it's by Birch. It is an iron-on. And then on top of that, you will also need tearaway V-Lean. So I think it's a violin or violin. I know every time I go into the Tusiti store, I always ask for it because you know you need it, and they always say it back to me, and I'm like, "Yep, that's the way you say it," and then I completely forget every single time. So I'm just like, "Is it violin, violin?" Ah, confused. But yes, you need that. It's very fun, especially when you get to tear it away. So this is my third Tusuti Fabrics pattern that I've used. I've used the Sadie slip dress, I've done the Evie bias skirt, and now I've done the Felicia pinafore dress. So I really enjoy Tusuti Fabrics patterns because they are very simple and elegant and nicely constructed. I really enjoy their patterns. They also fit me really well, so I never really have to make any adjustments to the pattern that I've chosen, I just measure myself, pick the size, and then it always seems to fit. So Tusuti is like my go-to like pattern 
friendly, body friendly pattern place that I like to go to. Um, it fits me every single time, so I enjoy that. And also, like I said, the designs are really simple, but I've noticed with working with them, they have really nice construction in their patterns. So really nice construction and it's really fun to learn with them. Uh, everything is like so nicely done and it fits really well. And yeah, I just really enjoy learning with Tassidi Fabrics and their patterns. So with this pattern, you'll learn how to uh, construct a neckline and armhole using facings. Um, and then you also learn how to top stitch around it to finish it off. And you'll also do um, pockets, learn how to do pockets in your dress. Um, and also do like a top stitching around the pocket opening, which I found really fun and also challenging. So when you first look at this pattern, you kind of look at it and you're like, yeah, it's a shift dress. It has a neck hole and arm holes and whatever and some pockets. It'll be fine. What an easy make. It'll just take like a day. No worries. Boy, was I wrong because <laughs> Like I said, they have like a lot of construction detail that goes into Tassidi Fabrics pattern. So if you think this is gonna be like an easy make, unless you're like a genius sewer and you know how to do everything perfectly all at once, then yay. But if you're like me and you're starting out all the time and everything's so confusing, then it will take you a lot longer than a day to construct this dress. Even though it looks very simple, it's got like a lot of nice detailing that takes some time. So I struggled the most with the neckline and the armhole facings, like just finishing them off. I wouldn't say that it's like anything that's like super complicated or anything. It's just, it takes a while to do it and you should go slowly when you're doing it. If you're like me and you happen to be like just one of those people who like to sew and sew really quick and just like bang it out and like just want to wear the thing really quickly, then Yes, I'm telling you now that when you get to this part here, you need to slow down and just go slow. Like there's a part where, you know, you get the facings and then they want you to, you know, stay stitch around the outside and then you finger press it in, which for some reason for me, like didn't really work very well. I don't know, maybe it's the fabric I was using or like the interfacing that I chose or something, but it just didn't like stick like on their little diagrams and stuff. It didn't really stick the way I wanted it to. So when I was top stitching it, like kind of, it was just really fiddly. Like I had to make sure that I was like pushing it in, but then I was like pulling too much. And then it was just, uh, it was just, it was just a lot, but I ended up doing it in the end and it turned out fine. Um, but yeah, I'm just saying, when you get to this point, just go slow. And so the other part that I had a bit of a struggle with was the pockets of the dress. So I have made pockets on a dress that I self-made a while ago, but to put the pockets in, I just like YouTube something and it was fine. It was really easy. Like there was no top stitching involved. It was just like, you know, a side pocket. And normally you would have the way I learned it initially was, you know, you've got your front skirt, your back skirt, and then you put like pocket, 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 pocket. And then you would put them together and then you would sew around the pocket like that. So that's initially how I learned it, but Tassuti Fabrics has a different way of doing it because they have top stitching in the opening of the pocket, so to make it like nice. So because I'm confused and I can't seem to articulate myself on how to do this, I will show you by drawing it for you. Okay, so I'm going to attempt to poorly instruct you on how you meant to do the pockets via the Tassuti Fabrics way um, because of the top stitching around the pocket opening. So first you've got the, the skirt front right side and then the wrong side of the pocket goes on top. You've got the notches here. So then you want to sew between the notches, clip at the notches and then overlock in between the notches. Then once you've done that, you would flip this pocket over and you would understitch against that line. So when you flip it over with the pocket right side and then the wrong side of the fabric, it should look like this because you've clipped in. And this section here is where you are meant to do the top stitching. So you would like pivot at this point, like go in, pivot, go down, pivot, and then finish it there for top stitching. So, then once you've done that, everything's all nice and top stitched, 
your skirt front wrong side will look like that. Well, it kind of look like, looks like this, right? So your skirt front wrong side will look like that. Put the right and you finish the top stitching. So then you would just grab the other pocket, put it on top, skirt pocket wrong side, or just like sew them together. So that's kind of where I got confused because I was like, oh my God, why are you sewing it together? What are you doing? Meh. But yeah, you just sew them together and then just make sure that on the other side, so this is what it looks like when you put the pocket on top of it. But then on the other side, you will see that gap where you've got your top stitching and then you can see that there is this pocket on top will have that edge there. And it's meant to expose a half of an inch past pocket opening. So then you would sew very closely down there, making sure not to actually clip, like sew into the pocket opening. Yes, and that is where I struggled because I was so scared about hitting that pocket opening that I sewed not close enough. I sewed like a little bit to the edge. And so you can see all this like frayed stuff there, which I'll show in the mistake section. <laughs> yes. And then once you've finished all that, you can just overlock the seams together and press towards the back. I hope that makes sense. I'm sorry if it doesn't. So yeah, now that I've like explained it to you and drawn it out and stuff, it seems like logical. But at the time when I looked at the instructions for the first time, I was like, wait, what am I doing? Where is this going? Why is this happening? Yeah, so this is the reason why you like, you know, try it out with a sample first. If you mangle it, it's fine. That is your sample dress. You can mangle it as much as you like. I still managed to salvage this though for the first time. I mean, it, it's not like super perfect, but it's still wearable. And that's all that counts. As you can see, I made a few mistakes here. I think I got confused by the amount of um, seam allowance on the armholes and I went a bit too wide, as in like I gave too much seam allowance. So the underside is not, it's very large, like that's not right. Um, and it's very narrow. You can see this, the line here is quite narrow. It's meant to actually be the same width as this neckline, which I did more correct than this. This is like a lot more narrower. This is a lot wider. What was I doing? Yeah, so it's also extremely bulky. So I wouldn't really recommend using a super thick fabric because the neckline will get real bulky when you're trying to um, top stitch the facing. So yes, I would recommend reading the instructions a bit more closely um, to figure out like, you know, how much seam allowance you should be going in on the armholes to do the top stitching. I obviously assume that it's meant to be closer to like the amount here on the neckline to match the armholes because this looks kind of really weird. But on the bright side, I did match both of them. So this is thin, this is thin, that is wide. <laughs> So also here on the pockets, you can see that um, it's fraying slightly. And this was because when you sew the front and back side panels together, your the pockets are attached and you don't want to um, make sure, like you don't want to catch the opening and then accidentally seal it together. And because I was so scared of that, I didn't go in deep enough. So that is why it looks like this obviously you know the measurements are correct I should have just did what I was meant to do um, but I did not do that and yeah I just didn't go in deep enough this is I guess you could fix this but I just kind of left it because I didn't want to mangle it any further so here in the second dress you can see that um, while I was sewing the facing for the armholes I don't know what I was doing but I think I was pulling too hard or I was stretching it in the machine and it ended up just sort of bubbling or bunching in like a weird way because I was obviously pulling too much and when I was top stitching. So I would recommend not doing that. Just let it go through the machine and don't pull too much. I think also maybe the presser foot and the feed may have been a bit tight. I don't know, or like too strong and it was just squishing them and then pulling everything to one side. Um, but yeah, this is what happened to it. So just be mindful that when you're doing your facings that you don't pull and bunch because this is what happens. It kind of just curves into one and then it looks really weird. So yeah, I've pretty much done this on all of them. So I need to do this dress again, maybe one day and not uh, muck it up as much. 
Hello and welcome to the styling portion of this video. I decided to style uh, the navy version because it's the one I've been wearing the most and also the easiest one to mix and match with my current wardrobe. So here it is by itself. And here it is for some basic slides that I got from Target a long time ago and this black bag which is Wayne Cooper that I got from a sample sale when I worked at my old job. And here I am pairing it with a denim jacket. I thrifted this one at Savers when there used to be a Savers near my house, which has now shut down, I'm very sad about. And I love this jacket so much. I wear it with everything. And because denim equals casual vibes, I've paired it with this equally casual pair of Supergoes. I think Supergoes? Supergoes? I like to put shirts on top of dresses and tie a knot at the front because it gives me more of shaping in the waist. Um, so I've done that with this white linen shirt that I thrifted from Vinnie's. Throw in a summery looking bag, also thrifted from Vinnie's. And I also kept those white super goes on. Okay, last look. White blouse underneath. This one I stole from my mum. I like it because it has some nice embroidery detail. You could also wear a turtleneck underneath um, instead if it's a bit colder. So throw in some sort of jacket. This one I got for free from a friend who worked at a denim company. It was a sample, so I had a big hole in one of the pockets. Notice my poor mending skills right there. Because I'm wearing a longer jacket and with a mini dress, uh, it's a good time now to throw in some heeled boots to add some height back in. Elongate those legs so I don't look too much like an actual blob. These boots are old Miss Shop. I like them because they're shiny. So overall, I found this pattern to be very good. <laughs> I'd say five stars. I really enjoyed the pattern itself. I think it's really a nice, simple shift dress that you can wear all the time, especially if you make it in gray or black or navy or any other of those like staple colors. I'm thinking of making, maybe making one in black and then another one in pink because I'm getting into pink a lot. I don't know why, but it just really suits my complexion. So, oh, actually maybe I should make it in green as well. Yeah, there are so many options. Like this is a nice sh shift dress that you can just wear all the time. You can make it shorter. It doesn't have to be in midi length. You can make it longer if you want to be like me and drag it along the floor. I really like the instructions of to City Fabrics. I always enjoy like their instructions because they have like pictures of the actual thing, which help me a lot more than maybe the diagrams and things. They, for some reason, don't compute in my brain very well. Having said that, I just had a whole drama with the pockets, so I don't know. Maybe my brain just doesn't work the way it's meant to work, but I got there in the end. So I highly recommend this pattern. I think it's really great. If you do make it, just tag me on Instagram or DM me and tell me that you made it, um, and then we can ooh and ah over it. If you like this uh, video that I've just made and you'd like to see more of my sewing adventures, please like and subscribe, and I will see you in the next one. Bye.